Hello everyone, welcome to Drishti IAS. My name is Saloni Nant Kyolir and today we are here to talk about India's vision of creating a national critical mineral stockpile, especially in the light of increasing export regulations in China. So let us see what's happening here. What do we mean by the national critical mineral stockpile? NCMS is basically India's vision of creating a mineral stockpile, a strategic reserve of our rare earth minerals because they are essential for a lot of industries like the electronic vehicle industry, the semiconductor industry, the defense industry and please note this is not an exhaustive list, a lot of things will be included here, the aerospace industry and what else, medical equipments etc. So basically rare earth minerals are required by every country for their multi-sectoral use and they are essential for the growth and development of any country. That is why in order to safeguard ourselves from the harmful effects of global disruption in the supply chain market, we have decided to come up with a stockpile with a strategic reserve of our critical minerals. So here we wish to maintain a two month buffer of our REMs. Why? Because we know that right now China has a dominance when it comes to processed REMs. 85 to 90 percent of processed REMs, they belong to China. So China kind of has a monopoly over here, which means that China has the power to make or break the global supply chain. So we need to safeguard ourselves from these disruptions. That is why we have come up with this stockpile mission. Now, right now the export regulations in China, they are tightening, which means that the, the exporters in China, whether that's a Chinese company or a foreign company, if there's any company that wishes to export processed rare earth minerals from China, they will have to obtain a license from the Chinese government. And that license will be provided only after a heavy scrutiny of certain things. Like, firstly, end use of minerals. So the REM in question here, the end use of that mineral is going to be scrutinized. So why is that mineral being exported? Is it for the aerospace industry or the defense industry or semiconductor industry? What is it? So the end use of the mineral here is also going to be scrutinized. Then the destination is also going to be checked. So we are aware of the escalating tensions between China and US, the trade war, the tariff war which is happening between both the countries. So the tensions are so much that they are strict, uh, there are strict expectations from India also that if India imports any processed rare earth minerals from China, it is not going to export them to the US. So the destination country here is also going to be scrutinized. And then there are some rare earth minerals which have been prohibited from export altogether. So all these things are going to be scrutinized by the Chinese government. Only then it will be decided that the, if the license will be provided to the exporter or not. And if the license is provided, only then the exporter will be able to export it and we will be able to import it. So the export is going to go down because the licensing system has now tightened. It has now strengthened. So all these things are going to matter here and that is why we wish to maintain, in order to safeguard ourselves from this disruption in the supply chain market, we wish to maintain a strategic reserve of our rare earth minerals. So very briefly let us understand what do we mean by these rare earth minerals. So these are basically 17 chemically similar minerals where we have 15 lanthanides plus scandium plus yttrium. All these together are known as our rare earth minerals and we already talked about their usage, they have a multi-sectoral usage and they are rare, they are not rare because they are not found in the earth's crust, they are not rare because of that, they are found in the earth's crust but they are rarely found in the pure form. They are rarely found in a pure form. They are mostly found in clusters as conglomerates. They are mostly found with other minerals. In fact, in India, they are found in monazite deposits. 
So they are found in the earth's crust, but they are not found in the pure form. It is very difficult to extract them, to refine them, to process them. That is why they are known as rare earth minerals. They are found, but they are not found in the pure form. And it's difficult to process them. This is where China leads the way. This is where China is technologically so advanced that it can extract, it can process, it can refine all these minerals. That almost the entire world depends upon China when it comes to processed rare earth minerals. So this is why we also need to have such kind of a technology so that we are not over reliant on one country. But rare earth minerals are critical because it is used in a lot of industries and we also need to have a reserve of these and we also need to have a technology that can basically help us process and refine it for further usage in industries. Now, why was this step necessary right now? Like at this moment, why did we decide to come up with a reserve? Because we already know that China has a dominance, 80 to 85 to 90 percent of the uh, dominance is there and export regulations are being tightened. And this might even just worsen in the near future. Tariff war just might aggravate even more. Export uh, regulations might increase. So that is why we decided to come up with a strategic reserve of ourselves at the moment. Supply chain security needs to be ensured. Green transition. So in order to move towards electric vehicles, in order to move towards green fuel, renewable energy, we require rare earth minerals and India is very high on renewable energy at the moment. We have vision of creating such green transition, such green uh, renewable uh, electric vehicles. So that is why we need to have rare earth minerals in appropriate abundance. And then strategic autonomy is always required because right now we are over dependent, over reliant on one country. So we need to be self-reliant and self-dependent when it comes to rare earth minerals. So let us talk about the key features of NCMS. So reserve size we already discussed, a two month buffer. Our focus minerals are what? Rare earth minerals. Implementation model, this is a unique feature over here. Here we will follow the PPP model, public private partnership. Private players will also be included in the implementation of this model. Financial allocation is rupees 500 CR and linked schemes. So we know that this is a part of the national critical minerals mission national critical mineral mission this came in 2023 here we wish to identify and prioritize 30 critical minerals so in this also we have some linked schemes and 7300 cr incentive will be provided to promote domestic rare earth magnet production so these are some key features of our ncms but there are going to be some challenges in the implementation first and foremost the challenge will be technological as I already told you, China leads the way here. So, okay, you will maintain a reserve, you will maintain a buffer, but now what? You will have to process it, you will have to refine it in order for the industries to use it. That is where technology comes into picture. Technological advancement is required. So, technological challenges are going to be there. We will have to invest in our R&D. So, that is going to require what? Money. Financial challenges will be there. Logistical challenges will be there these research labs, logistical challenges will be there, technological challenges will be there, financial challenges will be there. But once they are overcome, only then will we be able to utilize the entire potential of our rare earth minerals. And this is very much doable, but we'll have to invest in our R&D, we'll have to invest in a new technology and innovation. Only then we'll be able to utilize our rare earth minerals. So that was all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the discussion. Now, before we practice a question for Consider the following statements regarding the national critical mineral stockpile. One, it aims to maintain a two-month buffer of critical minerals, initially focusing on rare earth elements. Two, the NCMS will be entirely managed by the Geological Survey of India without private sector involvement. Three, rare earth minerals stored in the stockpile are primarily sourced from monazite deposits found in India. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? One only, one and three only, two and three only, one, two and three. Please provide your answers in the comment section and we will meet in a new video. Thank you for watching. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.